Okay, calculus kids, let's give you some help on these test prep questions. Just as a reminder, you need to try these on your own first. Please, please go through the painful process of trying them out. You're supposed to struggle with this a little bit. If you don't struggle with it and do it on your own, you'll never get better at it. So this is supposed to be just to help you set them up after you've tried to do them yourself. So here's how this works. When you read this uh, sentence here, what jumps out at me is, what is the x coordinate of a point where the instantaneous rate of change of f, that right here, instantaneous rate of change of f, that is exactly the same thing as just saying f prime. That is the derivative of f. So when is that the same as, or in other words, equal to, and then we have this part, the average rate of change of f. Well, what's the average rate of change? We did that back in units one and two where we practiced finding the average rate between two points. That's just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is what we're trying to set up, this thing right here. So the first thing is find f prime. Well, that's pretty easy. You're just going to take the use the power rule, take the derivative of that. Then once you have that, you will need to set it equal to the average. So it says on the interval from negative 1 to 1. So we need negative 1 comma something and 1 comma something. You need the two x's, which we'll put down on the bottom, and the two y's. So how do you get these? You just plug it into the original function. Plug those numbers in, and you'll get the y values. Okay, so that's how you set this problem up. That should get you going on figuring out. Then from there, it's just a bunch of algebra. The setting up is the calculus part. Oh, and by the way, this is the same thing as the mean value theorem. This is the mean value theorem. When does the instantaneous rate of change equal the average rate of change? So for number two, when we're working through this one, let's see, we've got, uh, we want to figure out what's g prime of 2 equals 180. If we're going to use this, we have to first know what is g prime. So g prime of x is going to equal, let's take the derivative, oh, you know what, before I even take the derivative of that, let me write down a rewritten uh, the function g. So we've got 2x to the fifth. Since I'm going to take the derivative of this, I like to rewrite it first plus bx raised to the negative 2. Okay, no derivative yet. Now we'll take the derivative. g prime of x equals 10x to the fourth minus 2bx raised to the negative 3. Negative 2 comes down to the front, multiplies to b, and then subtract 1. All right, there's our derivative. So now what we'll do here is you plug in a 2 into the derivative, and it has to equal 180. So you plug in a 2 into this and into this x value, and then you say that it equals 180, and you solve. That's it. Number 3 is going to have us write an equation for a line. As soon as I see write an equation for a line, this is what I'm thinking. Y minus, oh, the announcements are on. Just a second. Okay, sorry about that. I'm making this during lunch. Announcements just came on. Okay, so equation of a line, we're trying to do y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. Okay, so what we need is x1, the slope, and y1. Okay, that's not too bad because what have they given us here? They've given us uh, f of 2 equals 5. And we're trying to do it at the point where x equals 2. Well, shoot, there's your, there's your x1. And there's your y1. That's easy. So the only thing left to do is to figure out what the slope is. And the slope is the same thing as the derivative at an x value of 2. That's what this is. So that's all you have to do here. Plug in the 2. You've got your slope. And then you solve for y, solve for this y right here, and you'll have your answer. Number 4, the line that is normal to the graph of f. So if you remember, normal is when it's perpendicular to the tangent line. That's what a normal line is. Or in other words, we want to have the negative reciprocal, reciprocal. We want the negative reciprocal of uh, the, the derivative, because the derivative is the tangent line slope. So a negative reciprocal would give us the normal line slope. So let's think through this a little bit here we want to know what is f prime of 1 equal. 
we have no equation to tell us what f of x is, so we can't really figure out what f prime of 1 is, but they give us a normal line that goes through these two points. 2 minus 1 over 1 minus a negative 1. I'm using these two y values and these two x values, and so when you simplify that, you get 1 over 2. So the slope is 1 over 2 of the normal line. Oh, holy announcements. Okay, this is driving me crazy. So the, again, this is the slope of the normal line. So what do we do with that? If it's the slope of the normal line at x equals 1, well, it's actually the slope at, 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 yeah, at the point right here, at the point 1, 2, at x equals 1, then that means the derivative would be the negative reciprocal of that. So there you go. Okay, last problem. This one's a hard one. A lot of kids have questions with this one. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. We have to figure out when does the derivative equal negative 1. You'll see, excuse me, you'll see why we need a calculator here in just a minute. So uh, the first thing is, let's take the derivative of that. So we get 6x to the fifth power minus 4x cubed. So we want to know when does that derivative, which we've written over here in red, equal negative 1. 1. That is way too hard to solve just algebraically. So what we need is a calculator, and this is all you got to do. y1 is going to equal 6x to the fifth minus 4x cubed, and then y2 will equal negative 1. You're going to see where those things cross. So wherever they cross, this is what you need, wherever they cross is the x value that you're going to have for your answer. So again, since we're trying to do an equation of a line, equation of a line, we need this. y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So now we're going to have, for our answer, y minus y1 equals the slope we already know is negative 1. So negative 1 is our m, because that's the derivative, minus what we put here is where these two things cross. Wherever they cross, that x value is what goes right here, because that's when they are equal to each other. And so then you'd have to think through, well, what about this y1? What do you put in for that? I will let you think about that. What, where, how do you get a y value if you already know an x value? And then you have to solve for y, and you'll get one of those to match these answers. All right, that's it. Good luck on that mastery check.